Hi, Peter Charles here for Hooked Life Fly Fishing, and let's talk about wind knots. Well, first off, what are wind knots? Well, these are overhand knots that are uh, tied into our leader accidentally, and it's caused not by the wind, it's caused by our casting, our bad casting. And if you're casting badly, you'll end up with wind knots in your leader, and if you hook a big fish with a wind knot in your leader, it will likely break the leader and you'll lose the fish because an overhand knot is a very weak knot. It significantly uh, weakens the leader. So if you get an overhand knot and you can't get it out, you have to cut it out and tie in a new piece because that is now a very weak piece of the leader. Now, why are you getting uh, wind knots in your leaders? Well, the technical reason, I'll get a rod tip here, is when you uh, cast, start the forward stroke, and we'll get into the reasons why, the tip gets deflected far too much. And so it sags, and then as you're completing the forward stroke, it starts to relax. And as a consequence, your rod tip has gone like this. So it's made like a shallow U, a bowl shape, concave. And a result of going concave uh, means that the rod tip goes like this. Well, guess what? So does the fly line. The fly line follows the path of the rod tip. And what happens to our fly and our leader? It's following the same path. The consequence of that is, as your cast rolls out, your fly line is actually, I should say, your fly is below the level of your fly line instead of being above it where it's supposed to be. And then at the end, it will come up and pass your fly line. So it goes down then back up because remember it follows that path so down it goes back up and as it goes back up it hits and it kicks over and in the process of kick over, kicking over it ties the knot so it is caused by your rod tip going like that as you make your forward stroke why is it doing that well the reason why it gets associated with wind is what do we do when we're trying to cast into a headwind we use too much power Instead of using technique to overcome the wind, we try to muscle our way into the wind. And as soon as you start to try to muscle a cast, that's when you're going to throw a wind nut. Uh, and it also uh, is true if you've got an overweight line for the rod. It's very easy to throw a tailing loop if you apply too much power because it's being caused by too much power. But the tendency is with heavy lines is to use too much power. So you've, you have to be careful when you're casting heavy lines. You have to be care, careful when you're casting into a wind. And if you're just starting to learn to cast, you're always using too much power. It's, it's like a given. You're also going too fast. So your combination of those things causes the rod tip to go like this. So what is the actual mechanics? Well, when you start the forward stroke and you start it with too much power, your rod tip deflects immediately because you <clears throat> nailed it. Now here's the problem with human physiology. When we start fast, we can't continue to accelerate. So as you're getting towards the end of your, your forward stroke, you're slowing down. So your rod tip was very heavily bent and now it's starting to relax. So that's why you get this tracking in your rod tip and your line and your fly and you end up with the wind knot. The secret to stopping wind knots is to start slowly and accelerate to a stop. So start very easily instead of <clears throat> There's no need to try to punch a line out there. A nice slow start will load the rod properly. The rod tip will track straight and then your fly tracks straight and then you won't get wind knots. It's really that simple. Now is there, you know, I can tell you to start slowly and I guarantee it's a very difficult thing to do, especially if you're used to hammering your line out there it's very difficult to know how to slow down. There is a way to do it. Look at your back cast. Turn your head. Funny thing about that, if you're locking at your back cast, as you come forward and your hand and your head should be coming forward together, when you come forward, you cannot accelerate fast. It's weird, but you can't do it. If you bring your head forward first, now you, then you'll be able to hammer it. But if you come forward, with your hand, you can't accelerate too fast. And now, because you've started slowly, you can continue to accelerate it into the forward stroke. Your cast will go way further than when you try to muscle it, and you won't have any wind knots. So you're gaining on both counts. You're getting greater distance, actually, three things. 
greater distance, less fatigue, no wind knots. I mean, it's a win-win-win, right? All it is is slowing down, getting slower and slower with your casting. People rush, they use too much power. The rod tip goes in a big bowl shape or a shallow U, and they've got a wind knot. And that's basically the bottom line. Slow down, use less power, relax, take your time, turn your head and watch your back cast. All these things will lower the level of your casting. You'll enjoy your casting so much better. I mean, it drops the whole fatigue. You won't end up the day with a sore arm. And, you know, you'll end up uh, casting a lot further, a lot cleaner, a lot more accurately, and you'll be able to cast into the wind, which is the funny thing. So, give it a try. Slow down. Cheers.